Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. My good friend Mark Phillips sent me notes. Steve, check the story out from England. It's from Yahoo. Reckless driver clocked at 162 miles per hour in his Porsche in one of the highest speeds ever recorded by police. So there's a bunch of stuff going on here. The story is not that detailed, other than the fact that we know that some guy blew past a, a radar gun that was turned on, and it recorded him going 162 miles per hour in his Porsche. And the police have said that is one of the highest speeds they've ever recorded. Now, <laughs> I don't know if that's something you can be proud of. Can you put that on your resume or something? But uh, it says here the reckless driver was clocked at 162 miles per hour in his Porsche, one of the highest speeds ever recorded by police. The man is 62 years old, and he was filmed hurtling along the A43 bypass in Corby. Now, this happened back in May, but it's already been resolved in court, so we know what happens to you if, while in England, you do 162 miles per hour uh, on the roadway. Officers uh, from the Safer Roads team were monitoring rush hour traffic. <laughs> When the man passed their mobile enforcement van at 6.15 in the evening. Now, I have to imagine that the rush hour traffic is not that thick if you can do 162 miles per hour through it. Uh, most rush hour traffic I'm familiar with, you have a hard time getting up to the speed limit, let alone blowing past it by so much. He was clocked at 162, and again, this is miles per hour, more than double the legal speed limit and one of the fastest speeds ever recorded by police. The man admitted driving at a speed in excess of 70 miles per hour when he appeared before the courts. He was banned from driving for six months and fined 1,000 pounds. Now, it looks to me like they may have cut a deal here. However, I'm going to have to read between the lines here because I'm not entirely sure how traffic laws work in England. But I suspect that many things they do are similar to what we do other than which side of the road they drive on. And I've tried that before. And it's, it's very, very disconcerting. If you're used to driving on one side and you change countries, you try driving on the other, that can really throw you off. <laughs> so <laughs> he was banned from driving for six months and fined a thousand pounds. Now let's back up though, where it says that he admitted driving at a speed in excess of 70. Now this is a math problem. They say that 162 was more than double the speed limit, but I'm guessing a speed limit wasn't 80 miles per hour. Was it 70? Was it 60? Don't know. Don't know. However, the fact that he was going so fast and he got a suspension six months, I suspect that they treated this equivalent like they would in America in most states, that if you drive 5 over, 10 over, 15, there's, there's these different gradations, so many miles per hour over the speed limit. And they'll say, okay, this many miles per hour over is a range, and at that point, it's points and fines. The next bracket you go into is more points, more fines, and so on. And there is often a case where after you've gone so high above that, that while they will keep track of it for just numerical purposes, they're going to say, you know something, beyond 25 over, it's just reckless driving. Automatically reckless driving. So reckless driving is usually a statute that says that if you drive in such a way as to endanger people or property with a likelihood of harming somebody, it's reckless driving. And so reckless driving, most people think of as just going out and doing goofy stuff. You know, um, I'm driving my car through backyards at night, um, or I'm out doing donuts in a crowded parking lot with, with people around who weren't expecting me to do that. Uh, that kind of thing is reckless driving, right? Well, it turns out that a set number of miles per hour over the speed limit in many states is reckless driving. Patrick George, former editor of Jalopnik, found that at the hard way while driving through Virginia a little bit too fast. I believe it was Virginia. They clocked him going a certain amount over the speed limit. They said, well, congratulations, you're speeding. Here, that's reckless driving. And here, that means you go to jail. <laughs> and so he went to jail. And he wrote some nice pieces about it that were published on Jalopnik. And it turned out to be great material for his column. So I don't think he minded quite so much as other people might. But of course, no one wants to spend time in jail. However, here we have a guy who was banned from driving for six months and fined 1,000 pounds. I suspect that most speeding tickets are less than 1,000 pounds. And many speeding tickets by themselves won't result in a license ban or suspension. However, I can tell you that in Michigan, for instance, a reckless driving conviction 
can result in a six-month suspension. It can also result in jail time. And it can also result in big fines and costs. And it can also lead to six points in your license when 12 will cause you to lose it. So it's a very, very serious thing. And I did see the word reckless thrown about in here a little bit. So I suspect what happened was that he blew past the police officers with the radar gun. They got him doing 162 in a 60, maybe. They pulled him over. And uh, they said, well, dude, you're doing reckless driving here uh, for going so fast over the speed limit. So when he pleaded guilty to speeding uh, above the 70, uh, it may have also been part of a plea to reckless driving uh, or some variation thereof. Now, I have to tell you, and I apologize if you've heard this story before. I've told it once or twice. Don't remember the context. But I had a client once who called me and said, Steve, I got, I got a ticket uh, for, for exceeding the speed limit by quite a bit on a motorcycle. And... Um, I said, okay, I'll represent you as a friend of mine. I'll, I'll, I'll handle this. Go into court. And um, I, I heard the entire story. And of course, the entire story was known to the police officer and the prosecutor eventually. So I went in and met with the prosecutor. And the prosecutor goes, whoa, dude. Your client was going real fast on a motorcycle. Coming out of Detroit, I believe. Real fast on a motorcycle. And it looks like they got him on radar doing something crazy. His speed limit is here, and here's here, and he's, he's driving up here, assuming that this is all gradations of speed. He goes, what do you think I can possibly do for you and your client on this one? I said, well, go ask the police officer what happened. And we went and got the police officer. And the police officer is standing there, and I go, can you please tell the prosecutor what happened? And he said, well, I was sitting by the side of the road with the radar gun out, and three or four bikes went flying by at an insane speed. Just insane. Three or four bikes went by at an insane speed. He goes, I believe they're doing over 100 miles an hour. And I said, okay, what did you do next? And he goes, I pulled out after him and uh, caught up with the one who pulled over. The other three kept going. So I said, okay, and this is not cross-examination, by the way. This is just us meeting, just, just the three people, the prosecutor, the cop, and myself. I said, so let me get this straight. The other guys took off, and you never got them? Never got them. No license plates, no nothing, no ramifications for them. They took off. Yes. Correct me if I'm wrong, but my guy could have taken off also, and we wouldn't be here right now. And the cop goes, you know something, you're right. I said, my guy stopped. Because he realized that he had to. He realized he'd made a mistake. And uh, he decided, I'm going to stop. I could get away if I wanted to, but I ain't going to. So he stopped. So you gave him a ticket. And the ticket would have been something ugly like this. And the cop goes, you know something? I agree with you. And he knocked the, he agreed with the prosecutor to knock the charge down to something much less, much less egregious. They knocked it down to something literally like 10 over or 15 over, something like that, but it was nowhere near <laughs> the insanity that it actually was. But again, when you're an attorney, and this is an inside bit of information here, but you may have figured this out by now. When you're an attorney and someone comes to you with crazy facts and says, I got a ticket for doing you know, 75 miles an hour over the speed limit or whatever it was, you don't just go, oh, geez, we're in trouble. You go, okay, let me think about this. Now, is there something we can spin out of this? Is there something we can conjure out of this to maybe give it a good, uh, a good look? And the good look is, yeah, my guy stopped. The other guys didn't. There you go. So that's a good one. I've also got to mention that, of course, the car is named a Porsche. And uh, that's one of those words that everyone mispronounces. They say Porsche. And, of course, Porsche is a family name uh, from Germany. Been around for a long, long time, made all kinds of stuff, including cars. And so it is, in fact, Porsche. So I say Porsche, but uh, I know people out there who do say Porsche. And uh, you can do that. It's, it's considered hip among some groups to say it that way. But uh, if you ever met Mr. Porsche, <laughs> I don't even know if there is still one or not. It probably is <laughs> in terms of who runs the company. Uh, I suspect he'd say uh, it's Porsche. But again, I've never met the man. So Lucy Leeson wrote that for Yahoo!, uh, my good friend Mark Phillips sent it, and a reckless driver was clocked at 162 miles per hour in his Porsche. 
in one of the highest speeds ever recorded by police, according to the police. Banned for driving for six months and fined a thousand pounds. Questions or comments? Put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. One day you will wake up and there won't be any more time to do the things you have always wanted. Do it now.